Greetings everybody! I am here today with a really, really exciting fruit that was kindly sent to me by Brian. Brian, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this one is really, really rare. Brian went to Ecuador in 2017 and found this fruit, so he collected some of the seeds and then brought it to Hawaii where he propagated the fruit and then one of the fruits he sent it to me. Uh, I looked all over online trying to find resources about it and no one's really talking about it. It is uh, a solanum species, so it's related to the tomato. It doesn't look like a tomato. It looks a little bit more like a lulo, but even then doesn't really look exactly like a lulo either. It's got like a little bit of a taper to it. The uh, hardiness of it feels different it's got a different kind of like shine to it and different color to it. Uh, even the top is like a little bit different than a Lulo. And uh, yeah, this is a really exciting one because this is something that is not very well documented whatsoever. So uh, today we're going to change that. I'm gonna give a full review of like what this tastes like and what it looks like. And hopefully then there'll be a little bit more information out there in the world. Because when I was trying to find information on this, I wasn't finding it. The only resource online that had any information about this that I could find anyway was uh, solanaceasource.org. So it is a website dedicated to fruits from this uh, family, the Solanaceae family. Good place to look. And even then, there wasn't a whole lot about it. This was originally documented by George Bitter, who is a German botanist. Uh, he found it also in Ecuador. A lot of times when you see the binomial name for this, Solanum pachyandrum, it'll actually say Solanum pachyandrum bitter. And that's because bitter found this, not because it is bitter. <laughs> and here's all the pertinent information I can find about the fruit. Fruit is a globose berry, three to five centimeters in diameter. Purple when immature and yellow when mature. The pericarp is glabrous. Don't know what that means. Solanum pachyandrum is restricted to the western lowlands of Ecuador and northwestern Peru. This species is geographically isolated from all other members of this section. The large fruits are eaten by local people and are considered a great treat by children. The common name for this in Peru is bombona. Whoa, that is weird looking. That is really interesting uh, because it's very similar to the inside of Lulo. It has the green uh, flesh. It has like a similar sort of pattern on the inside, but look how thick that rind is. It's much thicker. It looks a little bit like some passion fruits look. And it actually has like kind of like the um, the feel of a passion fruit too. It's like if you kind of like mixed a lulo and a passion fruit together. Yeah, mind my disgusting band aid. Sorry guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, another thing about it is that those seeds in there are quite big. They're bigger than uh, lulo seeds, I believe. It's been a while since I had one of those. And the, uh, the depth of the fruit flesh on the inside is not so super deep. There's a lot of rind going on, a lot of pith and rind inside this thing. The smell on the inside is uh, similar to Lulo, but it has a vegetable kind of smell to it. A bit like, like green beans. Like green beans and Lulo. How Brian explained the, the flavor of this to me was that it tastes like uh, Jolly Rancher candies, the, the green apple Jolly Rancher candies. And I can see where he's coming from. It does taste like that. It has a candy flavor. It has a bit of a sour apple taste to it. But there's more. There's more going on there. And what else I'm getting is uh, Lulo. It tastes like the Lulo. I mean, it looks like it, so it's like a little bit hard for me not to make that comparison, but the flavor is similar to that also. 
And if you haven't seen that video, I related to tasting kind of like Ecto Cooler, which is like a, like an orange high C sort of flavor, like orange candy-ish kind of flavor. But uh, it's not exactly orange. It's kind of like the the flavor of orange, kind of, but with the tartness of a sour tomato. That's any kind of kind of help to a comparison. There is a bit of a spiciness in there, like a little bit of like a, like a touch of like a cinnamon kind of flavor. So when I when I get that with that kind of apple taste, it's kind of like a like apple spiced applesauce kind of flavor in there, but uh, not that much of a cinnamon taste. It's like a touch of a spice. Maybe a hint of, of vanilla in there. There's like something a little bit more aromatic inside this fruit than just, you know, apple and orange, you know. Um, although it's related to tomatoes, I'm not really getting much of a tomato taste, maybe faintly. This is a sweet fruit kind of flavor, but there's like a, maybe like an aftertaste or something that reminds me of like cooked eggplant maybe a hint of like green beans, which maybe doesn't sound super appealing, but it's like really remote. It's only like, cause I'm like straining to find that flavor and I'm noting something kind of vegetal in there. It's kind of what it's like. Like green beany, eggplant, way like an echo of it, like way in the background. But in the foreground, you're getting green apple candy, touch of orange, touch of vanilla, a hint of like tomato maybe. Yeah, that's that's good. That it's actually incredibly good. If you like fruits like the lulo, if you've been lucky enough to try that or try something flavored lulo, uh, this is in that kind of department, but it's better. It's better for out of hand for sure. Lulo is a very strong sour fruit. This isn't like that sweetness is pretty high and that sourness is pretty low. So this would be a good one to eat out of hand. I can see why um, it says that children like it because this would be a good one. You can just like pick it and eat it. You don't have to like do anything to it. Um, so I'm gonna try a little bit of the rind on it. I'm not sure if that is something that is normally eaten or not, but this thing is so rare that I don't want it to go to waste. So let's give that a try. Got a little chunk of it. Tastes good. Tastes like a bland apple. The very outer rind That one's not so good. That tastes like a rind. It tastes like a like watermelon rind or something. Very tough, doesn't have a lot of flavor. But the inner rind, which there is quite a lot of it, maybe it's gonna like destroy my stomach, but it tastes pretty good. So there's the seed. It looks quite similar to a tomato seed, but it's tough. Like I bit through one and they're like pretty hard and woody. So it's a little bit different. They're more pronounced than the seeds you get from like a Lulo. So I think that's all I have to say about this one. It's really interesting though, to get a chance to try something that is so rare, but still relatable because it's similar to other uh, relatives in the genus is really, really interesting to try. And I think that this is something that has use. If, if this were more readily available, it would be a good one to try. And it's kind of sad that something like this, there's so little written about it, even though it is widely consumed by, you know, at least a small community of people in that, that mountainous region in Ecuador, Peru, uh, there's nothing written about it. And uh, there's just like that little bit that I gave you about like what it looks like and that kids like it. It says absolutely nothing about what it tastes like. <laughs> And that's something that I found a lot with some of like the rarer fruits that I found is that there's so little written about it and there might be like a photo, like a black and white photo of like what the leaves look like for documentation purposes and like 
what maybe what it's called in the language, the color of it, what the leaves look like, stuff like that. But a lot of times there isn't information about what the thing tastes like. Which, that seems like the most obvious thing that you would want to talk about is what an edible fruit tastes like when you eat it. But this one, no information whatsoever, just that kids like it. Well, kids like it for good reason. This thing is really, really tasty. And uh, yeah, before I go, I want to thank uh, Brian again for sending this to me. Thank you so much. This is a, an incredible thing to try. And um, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Hey, before you click out, I want to give a very special thank you to AltPod, Smarter Every Day, and the Harbor Leaf Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Uh, Patreon.com, if you haven't heard of it, it is how this channel happens. It's how I get all the funding to go on the trips I go on and how I get all the fruit that I try. So if you're interested in supporting my channel, uh, check out the link in the description below. Uh, another thing is that I have t-shirts for sale. Those are also available in the description below as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.